Welcome back to the Stars Made Me Do It. Welcome back. What's up? <laughs> it's really weird to be back doing it. I mean, we've done it like this over the whole summer because we couldn't figure out how to record in person, but you're in France. I'm back in France. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. And it almost feels more normal. Like it was mm-hmm. like, it's still weird, but like this summer it was like, oh, we're on the same time zone. I saw you earlier today. <laughs> we're just <laughs> going to record <laughs> from different yes. houses since we're not capable humans. Yeah. Uh, I hope one day we can figure out how to do that, but it was... It was also like, had I been able to dedicate enough time to figuring it out, I dedicated, like, I mean, we dedicated a decent amount of time, but like with wedding mm-hmm. planning stuff, it was just like, it was too crazy. So it was too crazy. Yeah. Maybe yeah. in the future when there isn't a wedding being planned, we can record in person, record in person, figure that out. Yeah. With it. Okay. Point. Like record in person with it actually sounding good. Let's specify. We did record in person. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, I'm back in France. We're back to a regularly scheduled recordings. We're going to have like actual more extra Patreon episodes. We were getting a good groove of that. And then that was just not possible this summer. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, so reminder, reminder that there are extra episodes on Patreon and more will be coming. And welcome Mm -hmm. to our new members. And yeah, welcome new members. Really cool. Very exciting. Uh, So yeah, reminder about Patreon. Go and mm-hmm. check us out on that. It's got lots of cool stuff and more coming. So, yeah, um, yeah we're going to talk about the moon today. Yeah. So keeping with our whole thing where we're doing people's moon signs for each zodiac season. Yeah. We're going to talk about the moon. Let's talk about the moon. It makes sense. Moon. Yeah. And yeah, even for people that don't believe in astrology, like they believe in the moon. Yes. It sounds so silly, but like, I mean people that are not into any of the witchy stuff astrology stuff like new age whatever yeah the full moon it's kind of accepted like oh it's a full moon people yeah that's like the the word lunatic like people Mm -hmm. who you know like (laughs) and uh oh my god being a teacher like every teacher if you were like you know into astrology or not it's like Mm -hmm. oh no (laughs) Oh no, not only yeah. is it Valentine's Day, which means candy on a Friday, <laughs> but it's a full moon this year. That happened in my first year of teaching and everyone was like, oh God, oh God, it's all lining that up. That sounds but amazing it, as for a, a child. child. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like I would have loved that elementary school full moon Friday, Valentine's Day. Yes, like must have been a blast. Yes, and all <laughs> teachers are like the full moon. So it's totally a thing like it really mm-hmm. does affect people i mean what the the moon affects like the tides um, it affects water people are made of mm-hmm. water you know it affects us mm-hmm. and um hospitals they have the most like emergency rooms yeah, yeah. the they're busiest around the full moon like the police are busiest around the full moon it's i mean the full moon even affects like your cycle not to go into oh. that but like oh it does bring on your period for yeah. sure i got down a which is really a real pain in the ass sometimes it is but at the same time i got down a really weird somehow <laughs> <laughs> i was on some yeah. sort of spiral of pinterest or something i don't know i really don't even know how i got there but it was something about how like the witchier you are your cycle like matches up with the full moon and the new moon and things Mm -hmm. like that and so anyways so we'll get into some witchy things later but yeah the moon is legit even for people who are not astrologically inclined Mm -hmm. it's a big thing so i had like i don't know a bunch of recent moments in like my last week or two in the u.s where i just started giving impromptu ted talks about the moon and (laughs) Sierra talks about the moon and I was like we should just do an episode on this because I clearly love talking about it. yeah <laughs> so yeah we're gonna talk about the moon phases in relation to astrology so like we've been like Tara said I honestly didn't even realize that this coordinates perfectly with the fact that we're talking about moon signs this year I was just Oh, you did oh, no. <laughs> Until you said that, it. That's why we were doing this. <laughs> Until you said it just now. I was like, oh man, again with the Sagittarius planning, like not meaning to, but it works out for 
perfectly. It but does. we're talking about moon signs, and along with moon signs, there are moon phases that go along with that. So we're gonna go over. Wait, and hold up. This episode comes out on a full moon. Stop it. I, I just I totally... just opened my moon app to see like where we are. We're in a waxing gibbous right now, four days until the full moon, well, which is on Sunday. I planned these things so well. <laughs> just just take credit for it. You planned it. <laughs> I planned us talking about moon signs since this year we're talking about moon signs. And I made us that it's going to come out on a full moon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Obviously. Yep. But obviously the universe wanted us to talk about it this way. So mm-hmm. um, a little bit of science before we get into the astrology. And by science, I mean like what I taught my fourth graders, um, the different phases of the moon. So. Uh, so shall we go back and forth talking about yeah. each moon? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So okay. you start us off. All right. Phases of the moon. You have the new moon, which is the dark moon. It's my moon. Yes. Tara is I'm born moon, on a baby. new moon. Mm hmm. And then we have waxing crescent, which is my moon. And Mm -hmm. it's the tiny sliver of light. Mm -hmm. And then you have the first quarter, which is half of the moon lit up, half of it dark, which always confused me because I was like, can't we just call it a half moon? But first quarter moon. Yeah. Technically, it's a quarter. Yeah, I guess. The moon is three dimensional. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We think. (laughs) Uh, and then we have uh, the waxing gibbous. Mm. So most of the moon is lit up. So like just you're going from a new moon, which is all the way dark and we're getting brighter. So this is mm-hmm. the waxing gibbous. Waxing means m- it's getting to the full moon. Mm-hmm. So most of the moon is lit up at a waxing gibbous. And we have the full moon, which should it be called a half moon? Maybe. <laughs> The half we see. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So full moon. And then everybody knows the full moon. Everybody knows the full moon. And then when we are, so waxing was getting to the full moon. It's, Mm -hmm. I think of it as like putting wax on, putting light onto the moon. Wax Wax on. on, Wayne off. Wayne off. Uh, Yes. (laughs) Wax on, wayne off. So now after, um, the full moon, we have the waning gibbous. So right before mm-hmm. the full moon is the waxing gibbous. Most of the moon's lit up, a little bit of it's dark. After the full moon, it's the waning gibbous, which is exactly the same. Most of the moon is lit up, but some of it's dark, but it's just the other side because now we're getting less light as we go. Yep. And same thing for the last quarter. The other half is light and the other half is dark, but it's And then, half. yeah. And then waning crescent. It's the opposite of a waxing crescent. So just a sliver of light again, but it's just the opposite side. And then. Mm -hmm. And then back to the new moon. Not twilight though. (laughs) (laughs) We'll talk about twilight later. Oh my God. I like part of me is like, I never want to do a twilight episode. A part of me is like, I would love to do a twilight. And I think a lot of listeners would be fine with that. Oh, I'm not, I'm not anti twilight, but I'm also like, I don't know that we need to get into that. (laughs) You know, it's such a weird thing how it's like, it was so bad, but so good. Yes. But, yeah. I mean, it was definitely a part of life. Oh, and I like That's devoured cool. those books and anyone, mm-hmm. there's some Twilight lovers out there, like, go you. I'm good with yeah. that. Yeah. Don't try to tell me it's better than Harry Potter, but I'm good with if you like Twilight. <laughs> it's fine. You can like Twilight. It's fine. Okay. Well, we'll add that to our list then, I guess. Yes. Um, uh, those are the phases okay. of the moon. If you're not even talking about anything astrologically. So mm-hmm. let's bring it back to astrology. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So whatever zodiac sign we're in right now, we're in Virgo season. Hang on. Is this, this is my moon, right? Coming up or no, sorry. This is going to be a Virgo moon coming up. It's going to be. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So yeah. whatever zodiac season you're in, we're in Virgo right now. When the moon is new, it will be a Virgo moon. It will be the moon of that sign. Yes. So what I said, ignore what I said like two seconds ago. About, is this my moon? <laughs> okay. So yeah, Sunday. if it's a new moon, it's going to be the same. It's like right. not a, this Sunday is a not full moon. Full so moon. we'll get to right. that in a second. But like yes. the new moon is whatever the zodiac sign of the season is. So like you mm-hmm. said, we're in Virgo season. So the new moon during Virgo mm-hmm. season, Which the was... moon will be in Virgo. Yeah, a couple 
mean, like two weeks, a couple ago. days, two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. That was a Virgo moon in Virgo season because yeah. it's the new moon. And so we have you as an example, because mm-hmm. you are a Libra sun. So you're a Libra because you were born during Libra season, but yeah. you were also a Libra moon. So mm-hmm. without having to go search, what was the moon phase when I was born? You're like, Hey, I'm a Libra moon. And mm-hmm. if the moon is new, it's in the same sign as that Zodiac season. So Libra sun, Mm -hmm. Libra moon, you were born Mm -hmm. on a new moon. So anyone out there who has the same sun and moon sign, you were born on a new moon. Yes. And I think that's really cool. And I didn't, until I was like bullet journaling and writing down the moon sign every time I'm like, huh, (laughs) every single time (laughs) it's the Zodiac season, the new moon is the same one. And I was like, duh, I don't know how I didn't realize that, but yeah. So that's for the new moon. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So tell us about the full moon. It's the opposite of that. The so opposite. like it'll it be the be... opposite sign on the chart. Yeah. What's across from you, right? Exactly. When it's a full moon in your zodiac season. So full moon on Sunday will be a Pisces moon, correct? Because that's opposite of Virgo. Yeah. And it's, it's still, we're still Virgo season, right? I'm just like checking. Yeah. I know. I keep, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's still Virgo season. So this, the, when this episode comes out, it's the full moon. Mm -hmm. And since we're in Mm -hmm. Virgo season, the moon will be in the opposite sign from Virgo, which is Pisces. So, Mm -hmm. and that's kind of the opposite example (laughs) that I wrote down is cousin Sabrina. So Mm -hmm. cousin Sabrina is a Pisces. She was born when the sun was in Pisces. She's a Pisces, but she has a Virgo moon. So Mm -hmm. she was born on a full moon because Virgo is the opposite from Pisces. So if your moon sign is the opposite of your sun sign, that means you're born on a full moon. That's like, that's one of our guests. Dana is a Libra and her moon is in Aries. So that's the Mm. opposite. So that means she was also born on a full moon. So if your Mm -hmm. moon sign is the opposite sign as your sun sign, that means you were born on a full moon. Mm -hmm. So, which I think is cool because people who have opposite signs for sun and moon, not that I'm saying you're like a conflicted individual, but it's a lot of clashing. um, It is feelings and brought on by the full moon yes the full moon does that i know i love that it's, it's like really okay, cool. full moon mm-hmm. like brings up it's a very highly charged emotional time in general mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. if you were born on the full moon your sun and your moon are in opposite signs it's exactly what you just said it's like i, I just it's like the <laughs> the science and the astrology coming yeah. together which i yeah love it it's legit it's legit and so um another example. So that was a new moon example and then a full moon example. And then I realized that there are a lot of waxing crescent examples in uh, our lives. Um, Mm -hmm. so waxing crescent is the, the, the phase right after the new moon. So going back Mm -hmm. to our science part, it's when there's just a tiny bit of light showing it's the first bit of light showing after the new moon. And so Mm -hmm. that is me and my mom and our awesome guest Mimi and our cancer, sorry, no, Leo moon guest, Laura. So Mm -hmm. that would be, I'm a Sagittarius sun, the sign after Sagittarius is Capricorn and I have a Capricorn moon. So it means that if your moon sign is the astrological sign right after your sun sign means you were born on a waxing crescent. So Mm -hmm. I'm the example of Sagittarius sun, Capricorn moon, waxing crescent. My mom is a Capricorn sun with Aquarius moon. Aquarius is the next sign after Capricorn. So she's also a waxing crescent. Mimi is an Aries sun with a Taurus moon. Taurus comes after Aries, so waxing crescent. And then Laura is a Cancer sun and she has a Leo moon. Leo comes after Cancer, so waxing crescent. So I just realized that when I was going through and seeing, uh, I don't know, the people in my life and seeing what their moon phases and everything. I'm like, wow, we all have, we all have our moons one sign after our suns and Mm -hmm. mine's interesting though is because that's actually that's like we'll talk about aspects at some point but that makes a certain aspect but my sun and my moon even though they're one sign away from each other they're really far away from each other still because my sun's at the beginning of Sagittarius and my moon is at the end of Capricorn so like I have a different kind of aspect but that also like 
think about that personality wise, you know, you have, they're, they're not the same. They're not compatible elements when you think about mm-hmm. that. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's me having a fire sun and an earth moon. It's my mom having an earth sun and an air moon. It's uh, Laura having a water sun and a fire moon. So you have those kind of sometimes conflicting elements too, when you're born on a waxing crescent. So we're not going to go through every single one of those, but just bringing that part up because we had a lot of people that happened to have waxing crescent birthdays. Hey, Tara, did you know that your name kind of sounds like the word tarot? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of tarot, there's a really cool shop called Tarot in Time that is so much more than just a shop. You are right. Tarot in Time is a tarot and astrology service with a brick and mortar store located in Kent, Connecticut, for all your metaphysical, herbal, and tarot needs. Their herbal and holistic approach to tarot and astrology is extremely welcoming. Their website includes videos of each reader so you can find the right match for you. And they offer in-person or distanced via Zoom tarot and astrology readings. Prices are very reasonable, starting at $25 for a 15-minute reading. I've had multiple readings from Tarot and Time, both in person and online. When I was in the U.S., I've been in their actual shop. And when I've been here in France, I've been able to coordinate it fine doing the readings online. Yeah, I had one in person, uh, one in person reading, and it actually changed my mind about tarot readings. I wasn't a huge fan of them before, but after my reading, I kind of changed my mind about it and I like them now. Yeah, so you can do easy booking online at tarotintime.com. That's T-A-R-O-T-I-N-T-H-Y-M-E.com. So now here's a question, and I might just cause a ton of confusion by this because my brain is kind of like having trouble comprehending. So a full moon yeah, and new moons, they're generally like a day or two, right? Yeah. There's usually like one day where it's that's the full moon. Sometimes it's like considered like... It was a little bit last night and tonight. I think it's It's like 14 hours. I think it's something like that. So, but waxing and waning Uh and all that, those are like a little longer, aren't they? I think that they're all. Right. So, I mean, you could probably be born during a waxing crescent as well. And also like you could have been an Aquarius moon. Does that make sense? It does make sense what you're saying. I'd have to calculate it. And I did Yeah. Yeah. No, that's okay. I'm just trying to think like where I think you can still be a double sign on the new, you know, being born on the new moon, Libra, Libra, but like maybe not exactly on the new moon, right? Because it would be, I don't know. I'm just confusing myself, I guess. I think you're confusing yourself. I think (laughs) as a general rule, like that it's because the phases are like broken up into the days of the like the moon phases, the moon signs are, you know, like signs are broken up into the, Mm -hmm. the days and degrees. So there can be some overlap there, but I just, I don't know the exact thing. I don't want to give misinformation. You know what else though, with the half moon or quarter, what is it? Quarter waxing. That's probably kind of easy to figure out too, where it's like, where are you three court? Where's your sign? Like three quarters away from you. Yes. Yeah. 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 One quarter away from you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So are you born on a half moon? You would be the sign that's the, or like in the between next cardinal you, sign or the exactly. next exactly right exactly so like I like it yeah it's because the it's broken up into kind of like how it's like the four seasons it's like the four main moon signs almost mm-hmm. you think of full moon the opposite being new moon then you have first quarter the opposite being last quarter and so that's the same as like the the beginning of every season is a cardinal you know so if you are if you are at, let's let's do one if you're in Aries. Mm -hmm. And then you have a um, cancer moon that would be a a a first quarter, first quarter moon. Yeah. 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 Whereas if you're an Aries and you have a Libra moon, that would be you're born on a full moon. Yes. Yeah. And then if you're an Aries learning along with (laughs) us, because I'm I'm learning as we go. And it's it's fun. Like it is so fun fun when it clicks and it's like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. And like an Aries with a Capricorn moon would be born on a last quarter. Yes. Yeah. 
So it kind of all, all calculates that way, but I like that. Yeah. So yeah. from like an astrological and a little bit magical point of view, each moon phase is good for something or it can like determine personality traits. So, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like we said with the full moon, like there's that affects people in general. So if you're someone who's born on the full moon, that's a certain personality trait that comes mm -hmm. along with it. But it also makes sense astrologically because it's going to be an opposite sign. So there's like conflicting energies, but mm -hmm. we're just going to go through the phases of the moon and the personality traits that come along with it. Um, sources oh, from- Mind <sighs> journal and sweet bee design. Yes. Okay. So I'm just loving this now because now that we know. Yeah. Now that I just like figured <laughs> that out in my own head. <laughs> um, how? So if, mm, sorry, my brain's just having the, a little it's field in my day brain. over here. The words aren't coming out. <laughs> because Tara has a different Mercury and Sun. Uh huh. Yeah. But also, uh, anyway, it's just interesting to see how. These personalities are determined because of what your sign would be based on the phrase. And your sun and moon sign talking to each other. And yeah, this yeah. is this is interesting. We're going to go through this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just no, I get I love, excited when it's like, Ooh, me too. okay. I'm yeah. loving the excitement through your excitement. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now let's share the excitement with the listeners. Okay, so... Why don't you start us off since okay. you are a new moon, baby? Mm -hmm. Okay, so a new moon, creative, seeks adventure, spontaneous, but sometimes rash. Uh, new moons are great for dreaming, and on the other hand, good for closures. Working on new beginnings, thinking of what you want to manifest for the, upco the upcoming moon cycles. Yeah. So new moons so, and full moons are like the big deal if you're a magically inclined being. Um, yeah. And we encourage you to look into all that stuff if you're really into it. But the, yeah, the new moon, do you feel that? Are you creative? Yes. Do you seek adventure? I feel like in your own way you do. I do. Yes. Yeah. Um, always working on something new, not so much finishing it, but yeah, definitely. I mean, I got a double cardinal situation going on here with starting new new things yeah but I mean I guess for for anybody on the you know born in a new moon I don't know what do you guys think let us know in the comments yeah are you a double sun moon sign are you always starting new things do you seek adventure are you creative and spontaneous yeah and like you know new moon Tara is a cardinal so that might be more prevalent mm -hmm. with certain things but like yeah. mm -hmm. new moon would be a Sagittarius sun Sagittarius moon that mm -hmm. maybe the seeking adventure part of that comes out more, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. uh, so those are for new moon babies and then waxing crescent babies, yours truly high ambition, very productive, disinclined to risks and waxing crescent time is good for planning. And I thought that was really interesting because I, I have so much ambition and, you know, but my moon sign is a cardinal sign, but I've got a lot of ambition. I think that it's debatable whether or not I'm productive. I think I can be really productive when <laughs> I think I seem productive to other people. <laughs> I don't okay. know if I would consider myself productive, um, but mm -hmm. disinclined to risks. Yeah. Like I'm, it depends on, I don't know. I think what some people would consider risky versus other people. Like, is it risky to move overseas not to a Sagittarius. That was not a risk for me. Like maybe some people would see that as risky, but like, also I'm not someone who's gonna like, I think I'm going to take the, like, I'm not a rule breaker unless the rules are stupid. That's my motto. Like I don't break rules unless I think the rules yeah. are stupid. So I, I would definitely agree with that description of me or, a, a, and I mean, good, good for planning. Yeah. You like, yeah, you took the risk to go over, but you planned it and yeah, figured it out beforehand. Also for waxing crescent though, like if it is a waxing crescent would be a good time to plan something. It's not necessarily just like, you know, we'll give the personality traits, but if it, you want to plan something, a good time to do that might be on a waxing crescent. So yeah. Yes. All right. Then we have the first quarter, which is a, a competent first quarter moon doer, restless. Uh, first quarter is also good for patience. Yeah. And then waxing gibbous. Those people are soothing, caring, and sticklers for perfection. And waxing gibbous time is good time for action. Mm. 
Okay. Uh, full moon, sentimental, perhaps oversensitive, confused, uh, good for celebrating though. And it's a super powerful time spiritually. Yeah. Full moon. I mean, I feel like there's full- so much overlap with, with Zodiac and witchy people. So I just feel like everyone who's in that category of listener is like, yeah, full moon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, but we talked about this earlier where it just makes sense. Like, yeah, you might be an overly sensitive individual or have conflicting, confused feelings because you're, if you were born on the full moon, it's the opposite of your sun sign. So there are conflicting energies going on in two of your top three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your turn. Oh, sorry. Um, (laughs) waning gibbous. So after the full moon, people are thoughtful, evaluative and judgmental. And it's a good time for gathering. Gather what you will. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because of like, well, I don't know. I like that though. Good for gathering. Um, the last quarter, uh, faithful, emotional, devoted, and good for learning. And then uh, waning crescent. So right before the new moon. Uh, dreamy and contemplative, individualist and solitary. And it's a good time for shedding. So like new moons are good for like kind of closure if you need it. And like, so I feel like right before Mm -hmm. the waning crescent is good for like shedding all the stuff you don't want. Um, Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. yeah, so definitely go look into like the more like, like really cool things that are like aligned with like the harvesting and just, you know, different sort of like, I want to say rituals, but like, doesn't have to be in a witchy way, just like, in you know, this is when I clean this, this is when I plant this, this is when I do this, like it really aligns with the Mm -hmm. moon. And also, uh, when I was in California last week, which is wild to think that I was on like the West coast of the United States last week. And like, now I'm in (laughs) freaking Europe, but, um, very Sagittarius of me. Um, Mm -hmm. but I, I don't know, mentioned something about astrology, something, because of course I did when I was on some sort of wine tour. And um, uh, one of the guides said that some vineyards, like as a vineyard, use the moon phases for harvesting grapes and for doing certain things with their crops and everything and are really like dedicated to doing that based on the moon phases and what's going on astrologically. So I thought that was really very cool. And that is really cool. Yeah. And like, I want to go into all of that, but I know there are people who know more about that than we do. So like go research from somebody else. (laughs) But no, I mean, not just that, but like, it's making me think of when we had uh, cousin Justin on and he was, and I don't know if it was a full moon. It was, it was a full moon. It was a full moon. D-Day. was it a new moon? No, it was D-Day full moon. moon. Yeah. Like, but they knew, they knew that it was going to be a full moon. He was like, oh no, they were aware of that. And they were like planning around that. Like people do the moon affects so much and not, I mean, (laughs) from vineyards to wars. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's uh it's there. And even if you don't believe in astrology, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. For sure. And um for those who are super into the moon and and maybe you already do this if you are super into the moon, but we just wanted to mention that moon water is a thing and it's a cool thing. And you can't mm-hmm. see in this visual, but two shelves up from here, I got a couple jars of <laughs> moon water. Show us, show us your moon water. I want to see. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> The other jar is too high for me to reach right now, but that's okay. Here we go. Here's my jar of moon water. Is it French moon water or Connecticut moon water? Did you bring it home with you? It's French moon water. I feel like I wouldn't put it past (laughs) me, but at the same time, like weight limit liquids, you know? Yes. Um, Yeah. Moon water, which is easy to make. Put some moon in a jar, put it out. Put some moon in a jar, Tara. Water in a jar. <laughs> you will have the moon power in the jar. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, tell us your method for making moon water. So if you want like all the awesome methods for moon water, you should follow Sheila Height. She's like awesome. So mm. do that. It's Sheila with two A's and then H-I-T-E. Go follow her. She's awesome. Always puts out a moon ritual thing. But um, I just like, she does it like a couple days before and leaves it out a couple days after. I literally remember on the full moon and I'm like, oh, got to go put my moon water out. And then I fill up my jar of moon water. I fill up a water. No, I fill up a jar with regular water. I fill up a water bottle with water. And sometimes I fill up my like thing that I spray my plants with, like 
and sometimes mm-hmm. Gaston, if he's trying to eat my plants, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that little spray bottle. Um, and I put them out at night. And like, sometimes like, if you want to, you can write like a little, like your intentions based on like what the full moon is. If it's the full moon in Capricorn, if it's the, if it's the full moon in Capricorn, I put a little bit more into it because it's my moon. Um, mm-hmm. and like, I kind of like, you know, depends on what the full moon is and what's going on. But you can write like your intentions under it, put it on top of that, but you just leave it out overnight uh, for the full moon. And then you kind of absorb that energy and then you can drink it or like water your plants with it or spray your plants with it or sometimes your cat with it. (laughs) I like it. Yeah. So fun story about moon water and I'm such a freaking Libra. And I noticed I do this where I completely see things one way and like mid conversation I change my viewpoint where it's like <laughs> because I see it on the other side too but then then I switch back so um I was telling Sierra's dad about moon water and um he said well wouldn't that make like the ocean moon water wouldn't all natural water in the world that be moon water and I said we both kind of stopped and we're right like about that. uh but the other side of me like is thinking well your own moon water that like sierra places in a jar and puts it out with intention there's intention there there's and intention yeah you're using the power of the full moon with the intention and like yeah all water does see the full moon but also like the other part of me just loves the witchy side of it and it's like yeah, yeah that's really cool you have this magical jar that yes. you set out there and sat in the moonlight in the moonlight and <laughs> And I like that. Yeah. So part of me is like, yeah, any water is moon water. And the other part of me loves the witchy ritualness of yeah. it. Yeah. And it so. also, I mean, everything does come down to intention too. Like even with mm-hmm. like zodiac signs, when we're talking about all the characteristics, there's the evolved and unevolved sign uh, side of everything. And there's like, you could know what your tendencies are and choose to be exactly the opposite of that. If that's what you, you know, you have free will, but it's like, this is what you're given. So I think the mm-hmm. intention is big and any part of life but with the moon water stuff it's like you know I'm just thinking okay yeah all water dad all water is moon water (laughs) and uh but at the same time like wouldn't it be magical af if you went and swam in a lake on a full moon and wouldn't you be affected by that more because the moon does control like you know it has an effect on water and being in that water at that time maybe it's Mm -hmm. magical af maybe he discovered something or not discovered something but pointed out something awesome that we should all go try but Anyways, yeah, if you are into that, you should check out Sheila Height. You should also just, I don't know, Pinterest, Google, some moon water stuff. It's really fun. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know, it gives you- me like a little a little ritual thing to do. I put out my crystals at the full moon, I charge them up. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, yeah if, if you want to do that, it's a full moon. If you're listening yeah. to this episode, the day it came out, it's a full moon today. So get your jars, get your crystals, get your water. Yeah. Like write down some things that like, you know, full moon is always like bringing something. I'm pretty sure it's like new moon Mm -hmm. takes away and full moon brings. So like, Mm -hmm. if you're trying to manifest some shit, like write it down and fold it up on a piece of paper, stick it under your jar or your water bottle or whatever it is that you put out there. Like I'd want to put it in the jar. I know, but I don't know, but don't do that. Like your moon water is then going to have like paper and ink. Yeah, true. And then you don't want to consume that. Well, no, you don't. But you don't have to consume it. Well, you could just keep it and let it be. Okay. Well, you do you then. I'm going to. That's exactly. That's the thing with moon water. You do you with moon water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like. If water is swimming in a lake under the full moon, that can be your moon water. If all water is moon water, sure. If you need it in a jar and contained with intention, let that be your moon water. I recommend putting the intention underneath of it. So <laughs> then you can drink the water and have it be an extra step of like, I don't know. I feel like I have a special water bottle that like throughout the like two weeks, like not really two weeks, maybe like day or two after, but I'll be like drinking it. Like, this is my special moon water. I need a boost, you know? And like, it, it feels like, okay, now I have a superpower. So mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, look into that. And also look into what phase you were born on and Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely give us some feedback. Let us know because we've got a lot from a, I feel like we know a decent amount about like personally about new moon, full moon, and then waxing crescent. Cause I Mm -hmm. know a decent amount of people 
with those signs, including us. And like, you know, so yeah. I would be like really interested if it, if it matched up with those who are, you know, the first quarter waxing gibbous, waning gibbous, last quarter waning crescent, let us know. And you can even, you can Google like what moon was the phase in on this your birthday, day, this year. Yeah. It'll tell you there's, there's apps. You can just Google it. It'll come up and then you can go back and see if you match up with the waning gibbous personality or the first quarter personality and so yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and try that or, you know, look it up, let us know. And mm -hmm. yeah. Happy full moon. If you are a witchy individual, get those crystals, put them out, get that moon water, put it out. This would have been a great time for us to have badgered Sabrina even more to get moon core going, but we can still badger Sabrina moon core. Sabrina do it on the full moon on the full moon. <laughs> we need moon core as our moon supporter. Yes. Oh my gosh. So we will be continuing this season of moon. Totally why I chose to do this episode today. Um, <laughs> we're getting into Libra season soon. So mm -hmm. talk about those Libra moons. We'll be continuing the moon love and yeah. Let us know also if you do anything like fun for full moons. Yeah. Tell us your moon rituals. Yeah. Very cool. We like that. And then don't forget that we are on Instagram at the stars made me podcast and reminder about Patreon. The stars made me do it on Patreon. We are on there. We got cool stuff. More stuff will be coming soon. And then, yeah, we're on Facebook. We got, I think, is that it actually, mm -hmm. we got a website, Mo mostly Facebook and Instagram, mostly yeah. Instagram, let's say, but yeah, yeah. got the website stars made me do it.com. Yeah. Stars made me. Yeah. We got yeah. that. One. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, we're pretty fancy. So besides <laughs> my amazing planning skills, why are we talking about the moon today? Because the stars made us do it. <laughs> <laughs>